My name is uh, Frederick, and this is my name is Michael. Is it wrong? Hello. Put it up. Yeah. All right. To green. Hello. Hello. Good. So uh, we are here from Sweden, and we're going to talk about same, how we achieved ten times better quality with agile transformation. And as Sean said, I don't know if you attended his talk earlier. This is our experience, and we hope that perhaps you can learn something but from it, but it's not how you can do. I mean, you have your own environment and cultures and everything. So, but I think it's good to spread the word that it's possible to be successful with Agile. And that's what we want to do. Okay, now my mic is on. Um, we, ha we, ha we have a goal of our own with this presentation. And it's about our key factors of trans the transformation. And the goal is we want you to understand why those key factors are so important for us. And we also want you to remember those key factors. These are our goal with this presentation. One thing that is almost all, uh, important also for us is trust. Uh, we put the trust on you. Of course, we want you to influence our presentation. Uh, you've been able to prioritize the presentation parts beforehand. And we also want you to ask questions during our presentation. Feel free to ask questions. Yeah, okay. so we said that you have been able to prioritize the, the talk. And it's sort of an experiment for us. And uh, we have had in the conference again that we had a link from our talk to a web survey. I don't know if anyone of you have voted, but anyway, you had the possibility to do it. Uh, we have the voting here now in the list. We have a talk backlog, and we're going to have a, this uh, whiteboard where we have the sprint or the, the sprint backlog, and also we have parts we have in progress and when we have talked about them. So we have divided it also, the board, into two sprints. And each sprint is 18 minutes. So it's time frames. And it's two sprints. So then we will be able to reprioritize in half time then, if we see that we run out of time or something. And uh, I won't go into the parts. They are in the conference agenda, if you want to have a look. We have time framed all of them, or we have done like chart sizes of how long time that will take. And uh, we can show the current standing. This is the current standing from the survey. From the votes. And we're going to run the presentation in the same way that you prioritized it. So we're going to start with the key factors that have most votes, and so on. So perhaps the, yeah, it won't, it's not a natural order, but it will be a prioritized order instead. And why do we do all this, Frederick? It's because that's how we work in Agile projects. We start with the most important things. And we don't want to skip them. Often you have the most important parts at the end of your presentation. And it, it could make sense, but perhaps you miss it then because you don't have time to tell your audience about them. Uh, and yeah, that's the way how we live and work. And hopefully it will be a more interesting presentation. We will see afterwards what you think. Uh, and uh, as I said before, we will be able to reprioritize re in mid-time. OK, let's start with the first sprint. Could you move those, those uh, notes to the first sprint, Frederick? Yep. Which, so one, which one fits to the first sprint? So the key, key factors, fact? effects, roadmap, and problem description. Makes 18 minutes in total. So. Is this clear for you? Any questions so far? Clear. Let's go. I, 80 minutes starts now. The first note. Key factors. Then I moved into progress. And I took it. No one forced me to take the task or the part. Uh, so this is the most, these are the most uh, important things or principles during our journey, I think. Uh, and the first one is a goal. 
or some people call it values, but we call it goal. And it's really important to have a goal to strive for. And to make it possible for everyone to strive for it, it's very important that it's clear that you have discussed it so, it's, so everyone understands it and also supports it. Otherwise, there's no use of having goal, I think. Um, and when everyone understands it, it could be possible for a team to walk their own path. And that leads us to the other factor, Michael. This is our other factor, and this is symbolizing trust. And we think that when everyone understands and supports the goals, it's powerful to work with trust. And when we trust the teams, they can take their own responsibility to reach the goal. This was our key factors. So you can put it to done? Yep. Oh, not yet, really. Uh, sorry. Uh, not done. Not done yet. What makes it done is, for us, we, we have seen that the combination of those two makes it very powerful. If you have both the, the, the goal and the trust, then you have a very, very powerful tool. It's our experience. And it's also our most important principles. And these we don't negotiate with. Now we're done. So next part is effects. What we did with... In, in progress. Oh, in progress. What did we achieve with this? Um, so I'm the sort of the manager of this project, or lots of projects we have. And for me, I, before I did spend lots of time handling tasks and resources, and now I don't, basically. Another effect is greater participation. Now we feel now that everyone cares more about the whole project, and we see that because they got lot, lots of ideas nowadays and lots of improvement suggestions that we didn't get before. And also we see much more cooperation between individuals and between the teams. Uh, we do almost everything together now, and we didn't do that before. And that, we think, results in much better quality. Uh, one example is we are two speakers here today, and we are doing that because we have been able to evolve this presentation between each other, and of course other ones have, have looked at it too, but it's good to be two. And if I get sick, Mike, we have a backup in Michael, he could have performed it, so. And it's also fun, more fun, and we think it's get better. Another effect is better communication. And uh, here we have a lot of help with the agile structure. You now the stand-ups, the, f uh, the stand-ups, and we also sit together in open office that frames uh, communication. We also have feedback loops for, co for communication. And our customers have been, they are more involved now than before. They really appreciate this way of working and they feel they make a difference because we listen to them and we can change immediately. If we show something for them and they say, oh, I would like it this way, then we can say, okay, they get response immediately and it seems like they like it. And we also ask them for their opinions and it feels much better than having it as it was before. We also have be better flow today, Le much less bottlenecks and, and stops. And uh, because everything we do now is visible, and also it's visible physically, we have all the tasks uh, on, on whiteboards in our office today. We're going to show it more later. We also have this climate of helping today, which, may, which makes it easier to, to have flow. Also, the, the good communication we're talking about helps. And we also have cross-functional teams today which makes less stop, better flow. And we have a method for structured improvements. Uh, as you know, the agile methods provides the structure for continuous improvements, and the most important one is the re retrospective, basically, where we do our improvements. 
And but we've also started with learning days and, like Michael said, feedback and coaching within the team. That is structured. And our staff is much happier today. And we think that co-determination creates self-esteem within the staff, comfort and joy. And we think they're also proud, very proud today yeah. of their work. Yeah, they are often so happy, so I'm sort of embarrassed. I think, I don't know what we have done, but they seem to like it. Okay. That was the fix. So put it in, done. Done. How are we doing with the time? Go, Michael. You should pick it up. Okay. Eleven and a half minutes left. The next one is the roadmap for the transformation. And the roadmap is basically how we did it. How, how did we do the, the transformation? We're going to show it in a timeline. Maybe it, it's more visible then. Okay. Everything started in the late 2011 um, with, an, with an idea. And the idea sounded much like, what if, what if we keep teams together for a longer while? What happens then? And we, the more we talked about this idea, we thought it better, the better it sounds. So, okay, let's, let's try it. So, in the beginning of 2012, we did start a pilot. We handpicked seven people out of 45 that we believed could be a, you know, a, a good pilot team. And we said to them, okay, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try keep you together. And the reason is we want to have better quality. That's the only reason we do this. And I was a scrum master for this team. And they asked me, okay, how are, how are we going to work? Uh, what methods should we use? And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> and someone said, well, maybe we should try these agile ways, methods. And then we, uh, we, we thought, well, wait, uh, we can try that. So everyone in the team uh, got this book from a Swedish author, Henrik Nieberg. It says the book name was uh, Kanban versus Scrum, How to Make the Most of Both. So everybody read it, and then we sat down and had a talk. How should we work? What principles should we work? Kanban or Scrum or a mix of it? And now everyone in the team could have their opinion. And we, we also formed our own goal for this pilot team. I didn't thought of that first, because I was thinking this, uh, this better quality goal was the only goal we should have. But they, the team for, made their own goals. And then we started to work, and uh, we saw by start that this is going very good. The, the quality increased from, from the start of it. So it didn't took that long. When we reached September, we did put together another team. Uh, I was the scrum master of this team too. So we had another seven people to this team. And uh, I did the same thing. I, th I thought I did the same thing with this team as the first team. Uh, but now things didn't go as fine as the pilot team. We couldn't see any increase of quality. So we were thinking about that. Why, why, aren't, why aren't this team doing as well as the, as the pilot team? And then we got it. The first team got this, got this goal, better quality. We should do this by, by better quality. And they were really self-organized. And the other team got this goal, do as the first team. Basically, do as the first team. So when we realized that, it was kind of a aha moment for us. Then we had to work a little role again. They, ha they had also to read this book, of course. And then we sat down and made our own principles. And we also made our own goals. And now everything was working fine again we can see an increase, in, increase of quality directly, I, sh I should say. So, now we're in the beginning of 2013. After these two, the pilot team and the team two, we thought maybe 
we don't have to wait anymore. Let's roll out the Agile for whole the, whole the project. So we did put together team three, team four, and a supporting team, and also this coordinating team. And now everyone in the project was within a team. And by this time we had really realized that it's good to ask people if they want to do this. At first we didn't really ask, I think, when we put together the pilot team. But now before we did this, we asked everyone, do, do you think this is a good idea? Is it something we'd like to do? And we also discussed how we should form the groups or the teams. We call them groups, but they are actually teams. Um, and that ended up with this constellation then. So, and now we go back in time a little bit. It, now it's uh, late 2012, about around October, November. And I had this another idea. And the idea sounded like, what if, what if we let the team pick their own task? Before this, we had the product managers and the product managers handling tasks to people and teams. But then we thought, what if, what if they should pick their own tasks to work with? So we did like we did before, we tried it. So in the beginning of 2013, when we had all those teams, we made this uh, project sprint planning, for the, sprint planning for the whole project. We're gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna show it a little, about, little bit later, but it's all about putting the, all of the teams together in one room and make the sprint planning together. That's, that's what it's all about. And we all, that one also went fine from the start, yeah. I think. Okay, uh, when we look back at this time, from the late 2011 to the beginning of 2013, we think of this period as the agile transformation of our project. And this is the period where we realize that goal and trust is very important for us, especially around this uh, team two constellation where they didn't work so, where it, they, it didn't work so good for them at the start, but when we, when we sat down again and gave them a, a clear goal and made them self-organized, we really, really real, realized that th this is important for us. So, and do we stop after we have done the Agile transformation? No, we didn't stop. So now we're into the Agile evolution part, I would say. So we continue to work and we are developing our methods all the time. Uh, I will just show some suggestions that have come up from within the projects, the team, different teams. Uh, earlier we didn't have, have free seating, now the teams can select how they want to sit, and as long as it works for everyone. Um, we celebrate victories, like our deliveries. One team prepares dinner for, or lunch, for the rest of the project, and then it goes around. And it's also a nice way of, it's really appreciated. Uh, we have this feedback uh, structure, structure of doing fe structured feedback within the teams. And like, it's coaching, it's a way of finding the driving forces for all the individuals in the team and perform better. Uh, we have updated our goals because, yes, the question. Sorry, one. Yeah, well, we said, we told them, we clarified the goal and let them make their own goals to reach that goal. And earlier, they, we just gave them the goals from group one and said, this is, these are go your goals. And it didn't really work. So, did it answer your question? Yep. Uh, so now we updated the goals, we, so we asked our customers and uh, within our organization we have goals and, and also within the project we have goals that we want to reach, so we coordinated all the goals and had a chat together, the whole project, and selected new goals, basically. And after that, the teams went back and put up their own goals to reach the project goal. And it seems to be a good way of spreading the goals and make everyone work with them for a while. It takes a day, but it seems to work. 
uh, and also we have started with learning days. It's sort of self-organized training performed within the project. So the, the co-workers can select what they want to do. They have to do it in groups and they have to, to show what they did the day after. Present a 10 minute abstract of what they did to everyone. So it's also a good way of show or sharing the results of the learning day. Okay, so two, two minutes it. left. Whoops. We're ready with the roadmap. Move it to Dan. Okay. The next one is for you, Frederick. Oh, sorry. No. We're not ready no, yet. No, I'm not ready. Important principles. Uh, we, yeah. So we took the, the ideas to do this came from within our project, and we think that's really important. So it wasn't the management that told us you have to do this. I think it, that's a good way of doing things. It should come from yourself, not from someone else. Uh, and you have to dare to try, and it's accepted to fail, but you have to learn from your failures, of course. And we take everything in small steps. We say evolution instead of revolution. And um, we use test, evaluate, change. So we try something on and evaluate how it went and change if we have to. And um, if we are unsure about something, we use a pilot. So we just try it in a smaller, just one team or something like that. So now. Already now, <laughs> sorry. Roadmap to Dan. Yes. How much time do we have? Half oh. minute. So but let's start with problem description. So what was our problem now? This is an awkward order. Uh, we had quality issues, serious quality issues. So our customers weren't satisfied with what we did. So we had 80 stopping errors in production over a year, in a period of a year. And uh, that was way too much for our customers. So they did complain. And we had to release those corrections in 11 emergency patches. Oh, now the, the sprint is up. First sprint is up. Time's up. And we didn't really get to the end. We didn't get to the end of it. So what should we do? I think we should move it to this, to this one, to the sprint two. And then we fill it up with the result of the transformation now and then. And a practical example. I don't know if we have much time for more on that, than that. We'll leave the rest. No. We'll leave the rest. That's good. OK. So let's keep, keep, on, keep on with the problem description. Yep. The sp sprint two starts now. Uh, yeah, we had this 11 emergency patches. and. We just release four times a year, so 11 emergency patches, they were quite disturbing, especially since it stopped the product in production for half a day to release those patches. Uh, and the customers, they were not satisfied, of course. So that's what we had to work with, the problem. And also, the, yeah. And also our own staff was quite dissatisfied, because those, those 11 emergency patches made us stop working from our regular processes and, and start working with emergency progresses. And since there were so many, we, it seems like we almost worked on emergency patches. Cause, and that made our staff quite dissatisfied. So what we did we do before our Agile transformation? We had DSGM, sort of an, it's an Agile method, but um, it didn't help. We had, did use DSGM since back in 2003. So we thought we had to do something else. We, so we launched a quality assurance program and it, the assurance program came up with a couple of, or an action plan with ideas that we sh should try, but it couldn't really find a common 
point of failure. So, but it said that it's important. We, we saw that we needed more communication, and that's why we started those teams, the pilot teams. Uh, seems like this is. Uh, and we also did a certification. So we took a certification, this ISO 20,000, and that made us clear of our processes as they were then. But it was really hard to change those processes. So I don't know. It gave us something, but it was hard to change them. So that's why we, it didn't work, I think. Um, but the, and the good thing about DSTM was that our customer it got used to being involved in what we did. And also, they are very into priorities prioritization, they know how to prioritize. So, so now we're done with the problem description. Yes. And the next one. Let's move on with the result of the transformation. So this picture says it all, I think. It's about increased quality. It's the number of patches we had before the transformation and after. So our goal is, of course, to reach zero patches in production, but we haven't reached that one yet, but perhaps soon. We hope so. We still have something to aim for. Uh, and this, uh, this picture symbolizes satisfied customers. Of course, our customers are very satisfied. This is our second result. Of course, our, our customers are satisfied with the increase of quality. And how do we know that? Because we, we make service, but most of all, we know it because we talk to them a lot. This was a short one. Yeah, good. Good. So that was the result. That was the result. And the, now next it's, one the next one is now and then. And what is that, Frederick? Uh, it's sort of a comparison of of how we worked before and what we do now. So uh, it's, it's the, ba uh, the basic difference, maybe, how, how we work, in how yeah. we work. So what we have seen, that before we, didn't, we had goals, but they weren't clear. We haven't worked them through with the personnel or our coworkers. So we didn't really know what they really meant. And now we have. We have a clear goal, and everybody understands it and supports it. And we have it on the project level, as Frederick talked about. And we have it on the team level. And we also have it down in the, the individual level. So it goes from up from the project down to the teams, only way, all the way down to in individuals. And earlier, we had a centralized control where I was in charge of everything. And I had to do a lot of planning. But nowadays, I don't. So. Because they have the self-organized teams. Yeah, and that you, you answered the question. Now yeah. we have self-organized teams all the yeah. way. So for me, at least, this has been really good. I have time to yeah, be more visionary and do things like this. Uh, earlier, we had focus on a task. When we started a project, I had to create a project group and put people in. And it was a hassle, basically. And. Now we have the focus on the team now. The team sits together, and if we have to move something, we move tasks now, not, re not team members. And we can also assign a project to a, a team, or two teams, perhaps, if we divide it. Or three, or yeah. all or teams. Actually, we don't assign the projects. They take them on. So, and uh, earlier, we, we were sort of spread out. We had different locations where we sat. And sometimes the developers sat in groups, and the testers sat, they were situated somewhere else. And yeah, that was also not the best thing to do when we see it. And now we sit together. And it's an important principles. We, sh we should sit together. That's important for us. Yeah. It's so much easier to communicate. Are we done yeah, with that one? We're done. OK. How is the time? Good. Yeah, I can't. Done. Um, we have 11 and a half minutes left. Maybe we should be able to do more. Okay, let's start with a, a practical example. 
And the practical example is about the, the, project, the, the sprint planning, planning for the whole project I was talking about earlier. And uh, it's, a, it's a sprint planning session where we have actually divided into two parts. The first part is uh, preparation, the preparation part. We have, we have this big whiteboard, uh, much bigger than this actually. It's about four meters wide in a special room that we have. And uh, we ha on this whiteboard, <coughs> we have uh, uh, we uh, we actually do this before every every sprint, okay. So the preparation starts by us uh, calling the product owners. The, uh, our customers are the product owners. So the product managers and the 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 product managers sit sits together with the product owners, and we actually do a prioritization of of everything that is to be done in the project. So here we have uh, tasks from uh, different projects. These colors symbolize different colors. We have this project one, and project two, and project three. Actually, we have more projects and more tasks, but the, this whiteboard don't, don't fit anymore. So you have to imagine a, a bigger whiteboard and more tasks. Uh, this, we also, almost every time, we have some internal tasks like, uh, that represent technical depth like unit test, fix of unit test and stuff. So we call our product owners, and together with them, we move tasks from the backlog, from the total backlog. Could you help me, Fredex, maybe? Into, and it goes something like this. Uh, this project one, th this project one is the most, most uh, prioritized. So we put the product one into the high, the high lane. Okay, we have the high lane and the me medium lane and the low lane. And here we have two different techniques, technique one and technique two also that we have divided in, into. So the project one is the, mo is the most important project. So it's up in the high lane. And then we have the project two. It's not that prioritized, but quite prioritized thinks the product owners. And then we have the third project. And it goes something like this. And then we have our internal tasks. And then we, when we have done this, we, we talk to our product owners and sometimes we, we can see that if we do this task, it's, it's quite the same as this one, so if we do it, it's much more efficient and we, it's cheaper for you. And they almost every time says, yeah, do it. So something like this. And we can say that maybe we should do this. This is not as, pr as prioritized. And we do this together with our, with our product owners. What did you say? The question was, what is the thing? The technique, one and two. The technique one and two. Do, uh, the techniques we're working with. Is that the question? Yeah. The this the te uh, we work with uh, Java and Uniface. Are the are the so techniques? So basically, the teams are divided into tech teams. Like they either work with Java or Uniface. So they're cross-functional, but they do. Maybe, the maybe one for the Uniface. No different. No. It's just the different techniques. Like. Parts of the pro we have different several products that we work with, but some products are written in Uniface and some in Java. So that's the difference, and it's still we have the part or the teams can't work with both, or they don't want it to. They wanted to work either with Java or Uniface, so they have their focus, and that's why we have divided the board into in that way. Okay, and this is pretty much what we do in the preparation part. Yeah. Phase. So after the preparation, that's typically like 30 minutes in the, in the morning. Uh, we, in the afternoon, we gather everyone, uh, everyone in the project, and we, we gather in front of the board, and all the project, product managers tell, yeah, they tell all the stories, basically, what, what we should do this sprint. And it's very important that 
this, the high lane is emptied, so nothing should remain there. But if the teams want to, if they see that they can do like this task together with this, and it won't cost more, then they can do it. And, but it's important that for us, the, the product owner is not in this meeting. I mean, it, he could be, or they could be in the future, but right now they are not there. And Some, sometimes we, we give them a call if we, yeah. if something we, we don't understand. To ask. Because this meeting is more of the work meeting. It takes like one and a half hour. And all the teams discuss the, the notes and the meaning of them. And we have like shirt sizes. We have estimate them, estimated them beforehand, but they do more detailed estimates if they think they need to, because they know how much they could put into each print. And then they grab the tasks and put into their their own board. And this board is all, always up in this room we have dedicated for this. So if, uh, if one team doesn't have enough things to do or they're done, they, think they can go in here and check if there are tasks we should do. And also, of course, we communicate between the teams, so they help each other at first. Quite, quite often we end up with teams uh, shifting tasks between them after a while. That's a quite common task. But the, the basic thing is that the teams pick their own tasks. Yeah. And this has been a, quite an effective way. It's quite simple, but it's an effective way of spreading what we're doing during a sprint. And we started off with, ha with having goals for a sprint too, but we don't have that anymore. But it could be effective. Sometimes it depends, I guess, what you do. But we dropped it after a while because we didn't need it, or we didn't want to have it anymore. And it's uh, one, al one, al one other thing is everything gets visible this way. Everything is on this whiteboard all the time, and even those things that we don't pick, they still there at the board. So you can go, they, the teams can go pick them after a while if they have run out of tasks. Are you ready with this one? Yeah. Okay. Good. It's done. Now we have time left, Frederick. What oh, should we, we do then? Well. Let's yeah, see. Let's see. Yeah, the groups they take the pro the task with them to their to the teams. They put them them up on their screen board, screen planning board. Yeah. What, what, can you can you re repeat the question? I was just confirming the understanding that tech one could have G1, G2, and uh, tech two could have G3, G4, something like that. They are the small internal teams, right, of uh, techs. But yeah, it's that way. It is. So, any other questions? Or didn't we answer the question? I thought you clarified. Once again, then. No, yeah, that is great. <laughs> yeah. How much, time, how much time do we have left? We have time. We could do that. OK. So now. Uh, we have some minutes left of the sprint, but I decided to put in the summary to, to the sprint. And it's not even on the board. So uh, let's move on to that one. So we w just want to repeat the key factors, the most important things we have learned during this. Uh, and it's the goal and the trust. And this is really what we work with all the time. If we wonder how should we solve the problem, we think of this, what does the goal say, and how could we trust our coworkers to solve it? And that's basically how we solve all, all our problems. So earlier, it was quite common that someone came up to me and asked, Frederick, how should we do? You have to decide. You have to decide this and that. And if I weren't there, 
everyone, everything stops. And nowadays, it just flows. And that's the flow picture we showed. They, I don't get questions anymore, basically. People do, and if they do too much, I can tell them, okay, next time perhaps, or I don't tell them to ask, but you have to think more if it doesn't go well. But I still encourage them to, to try, because that's what I want them to do, think by themselves. It's better if we have like 45 thinkers than just one thinker. We produce so much more, I think. And we have more fun too. Now the sprint is finished. Okay, questions and answers. We have a question. Wait, wait shall I? You, you should get a mic. So when we talk about this uh, goal, so like, like, do you guys like define the goals per, per sprint? And are these driven by the requirements? Or what, what is your major drive behind getting these goals? I didn't get uh, he was goal. asking about the goal. How do, how yeah. do we define the goals? Uh, maybe that, that, that was the question. Yeah. Where, where do we get it from? Is it requirement driven? We, no, the goals live longer than so. I mean, I can, we have a picture here where we have our updated goals. So you can see them. So these are the goals that we have decided upon within the, the project team. And we have asked our customers and our organization and also ourselves, what, what, do, we want, so what do we want to achieve? And what do we think is the best goals for us? So we put up these short-term goals and the long-term goals. We, uh, we had this uh, workshop, workshop session for a half day maybe. Yeah. Where, we, where we worked with this together. And this was the, the goals that we end up, ended up with. And we have put them up on the wall so we can see them all the time. And then we, we ha when we had the, these uh, project goals, each team worked with them and tried to understand them. And from these goals, they put up their own goals to be able to reach the, these ones. And actually, we had the meeting after the, the, all the team had gathered and selected up from their own goals. And, they told everyone that these are our goals. And they were different for each group or each team. But it, that doesn't matter as long as this is our vision or like the goal we strive for together. It doesn't matter which path we take because we are different as, as humans. We don't think the same way. So if one team wants to do it in one way and another way, another team wants to do it another way, it doesn't really matter for me as long as, as, long as we strive for this. And that's when we can trust the team. I know they are working towards this. So some guy and a developer, he asked, why don't we strive to work faster, produce more? And I said, that's okay, you can do it in your team as long as we keep high quality because that's what I, our customer asks for. They never ask for efficiency. No. In, 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 in a way of working fast, they always work, ask for quality. Yeah. They, they want high quality. And the thing is, when we have high quality, we can produce so much more. So actually, when, since we started this, we have reduced the workforce by half. So just half of us are left. I ha we haven't said that, but it's because of, we are doing so much things so much better. So we started to work, but the other ones are not, they are still working with us, but they're doing other stuff instead. So it's been really good. We have another question here. Wait for the mic. Um, how big is your team, uh, people? Yeah. The whole project? Yeah. Or project. one team? Yeah. Okay. Whatever is your uh, span of uh, your team size, whatever this is applicable for. How much is the? How many people are there? In total, we, we, when we started, we were like 45 people. 45 people. Yeah. And then we had five teams. But okay. now we're down to three so teams. So how do you see the key? to success of any of these initiatives is the trust, okay? Yeah. So how do you keep this sustained? See, people are together, and I think probably it's about three years, okay? And yeah. probably, uh, I, I don't think you keep adding, you know, and uh, moving people from the team, right? So how do you sustain this? One of the things that you said, one team will cook for the other or something like that. Okay, I heard that. 
Yes. Yo, how, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things we do, we have those feedback, feedback loops. We have a uh, structure the way we give feedback. So four times a year, uh, our scrum masters give feedback to the, to the team members. And then we have structured the way we, the, the, the questions that we, that we form then. So we have, basically we ask questions about, about the, the project goal and the team goals. So we, we give feedback and, 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 and also take feedback back from the members. So uh, that's how we can know how our, how our team members are. If they are happy, if they are working towards the goal or if they're not. And we are working a lot with finding everyone's driving force, basically. And when we work like this, I think it makes it easier for us. We talk a lot with our coworkers, and we ask them, what would you like to do if you could choose? You can't choose immediately, but when we're working like this, it's, it has made it possible for us to or giving us the opportunity to let our coworkers choose what they would like to do. And yeah, and that, that way I think we can produce so much more. So they are free and they can select what they want to do within, uh, within the constraints we have put up. I think time is up, if it's so. Time is up, yeah, thanks for us. Thank you. Please give us, you can always come up to us and give us feedback. We really would enjoy that. Yes. Thank you.